Okay, welcome to the second GOAP seminar this year. Today, we will hear a presentation from Stefan Blachy, and he will be talking about shortest, shortest characteristic factors of deterministic finite automaton and completing its positive position run by pattern set matching. Thank Rachel, you. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess first question, uh, what are characteristic factors? What <laughs> and what is the what is the rest of the paper? So imagine you have <laughs> imagine you have uh, you have an automaton that describes some language, and within that language we might, for example, find that a certain factors or certain substrings cannot appear within a string. So uh, when something like that happens, it means the automaton is bound to fail whenever it's reading anything that contains uh, such a string. Uh, using this, we can describe uh, like some certain kinds of languages. And uh, the task that we are trying to find is uh, basically, if you are given this automaton, to find these shortest such strings that cannot either appear in the middle or in the beginning, which would be prefixes, or at the end. Or similarly, that sometimes uh, there has to be something that is allowed, so it has to be some sort of string at the end, in the middle, or whatever. So um, first, uh, I will talk about like what this will uh, what will be an important part of this talk is a class of so-called locally tested languages. Uh, then we will look at how uh, on the uh, characteristic factors and how to find them, and then we will talk about how we can utilize something like this. Uh, which is uh, uh, one possible option is that we can uh, simplify or uh, make a run of an automaton on a certain string with some better properties. Spoiler alert, it can be in certain cases, we can do it in some linear time using uh, pattern matching of these characteristic factors. So uh, first, uh, what are locally testable languages? So they're a subset or there's like a hierarchy that is a subset of uh, regular languages. And uh, like, uh, uh, like on the top, we have so-called locally testable languages. They will not be of much of uh, an interest here. They're basically they are character characterized that if two strings have the same factors of some certain length k, uh, then they either are both in the language or none of them. So it doesn't matter like in what order something appears within the word, uh, if they have the same factors, they uh, both either are in the language or not. Uh, the class of strictly locally testable languages that, that uh, will be like of the most interest here, uh, they are characterized by having three, uh, three sets of factors of bounded length. Uh, we have set of forbidden factors, which is something that cannot appear in the middle. Uh, uh, they have like, like uh, k, and uh, set of forbidden prefixes and suffixes, so something that cannot appear in the beginning or at the end. There is sometimes like a little bit different definitions regarding like what the k actually is. There is like sometimes plus minus one or whatever, so I don't want to deal uh, to get like uh, too much in that, into that, but they are uh, characterized uh, by this. So a string is in uh, if it contains some uh, some prefix uh, from this set, it cannot be in the language. If it contains some suffix from that set, it cannot be in the language, and so on. Uh, uh, the idea for these uh, kind of languages is that if we want to decide whether something belongs into the language, uh, we can uh, make it using some sliding window style algorithm. So that means just uh, check something of like k and move it throughout the string. And if you find something that is forbidden, then you already check that string. Uh, similarly, we can uh, define something like this using set of allowed <clears throat> factors, prefixes, and suffixes. There, the idea would be the same. During the sliding window, if the, uh, if the substring is allowed, then it is OK. And I have to go through the, through the string from left to right, and everything has to be allowed. And then I will say, that uh, I accept. Um, the uh, last uh, uh, class 
or in this hierarchy are so-called definite languages, and there they uh, 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 depend only on the suffix. So basically, uh, doesn't matter what is like in the uh, in the like beginning or in the middle. We only look at what is at the end, which basically means that any automaton reading a uh, stream from this language has to read the entire word because uh, the decision will be only at the end of the language. Now, the classes of automata that uh, can uh, that can describe these sort of languages that can accept them are so-called uh, local automata. So first, uh, uh, well, they uh, depend on the uh, concept of synchronization. So we say a string is synchronizing to a set of states. If I, uh, within that automata, if I read a string from any possible state, if I start in any possible state, then I should end somewhere in the set of states that the string is synchronizing uh, to. Uh, we will be talking here about partial automata as well, uh, which means that certain transitions might not be present in the automaton. So we, uh, uh, so we are saying that uh, a string is synchronizing to some certain set if every path, if that path exists, ends in that certain subset of, uh, of states. Then we are saying that an automata is local, or okay, k-local, if every single string of length at least k or longer uh, is synchronizing to a set of size at most one, which means that also, uh, any path will either fail or end in some uh, specific step. And the class of strict level quality languages, so the one that can have forbidden prefixes and inner factors, uh, is accepted by partial local DFAs. And the definite class, which uh, depends only on the suffix, is accepted by total automata. So a total automaton cannot fail in the middle of reading the word. It always reaches uh, the end of the string, and then it will make a decision based on the suffix of length k, which is a synchronizing string. So uh, if we will look at some examples, if we have this automaton, for this automaton, if we make some analysis, we can find that it is uh, local mm -hmm. for a k that equals 2, which means that any string of length 2 is going to end only in one possible step. So we could try that for pretty much like any string of uh, length 2. So if I have, for example, a string da, so if I start from state 1, I will reach state three. If I will start from state two, then I don't have any transition on B, so it's going to fail. If I start at state, state three, then I will read B, and the A is going to fail. So the only, only possible path within that automaton uh, ends in state three. If I would do that uh, with uh, some, uh, some other string, for example, let's say AB. So from one, uh, it's going to fail. Uh, from two, I will read A, B is end in state one. And if I do the same thing from state three, I will read A here, and B is going to get to state one. So if we do that for uh, the other possibilities, we find the same thing. They always end in the same state or fail. Now, uh, uh, the, set of, uh, the set of forbidden factors for the local, uh, strict local test of languages that this, uh, uh, this uh, describes uh, they would be something like this. So in the middle of uh, the string, we cannot have these substring. substrings. Uh, if I read them, basically from any state, it's going to result in a fact. Uh, for the prefixes, I cannot read any of those when I have uh, prefixes of length 2, because from state 1, the only uh, string of length 2 that I can read without failing is the DA. And similarly with the forbidden suffixes, if I read anything other than a b, I might end in a final state, and uh, I don't, uh, I don't want uh, that. Now, for the second example here, this automaton, the only thing that changed here was that we have uh, uh, in this path we have a b instead of b a, and suddenly this automaton is not local, because if I read uh, alternating a's and b's, then it's not gonna, uh, it's not, uh, it's not gonna synchronize. So if I do that from state one, uh, I will uh, reach state three. If I do that from state three, I will reach state one. 
And if I will repeat that all over, over and over again, it's not going to synchronize to a single state. It will only synchronize to a subset of um, uh, um, size two at the best. Now, uh, regarding the shortest characteristic factors, uh, one thing that we can notice here, for example, with the uh, forbidden prefixes, uh, forbidden prefixes AA and AB. Uh, now, uh, if we will look, uh, like, look at the automaton, uh, it's sufficient for us when at the beginning is just symbol A. If there is symbol A, then I'm going to fail. So uh, having like this information that forbidden uh, prefixes are AA and AB is redundant for me because uh, the shortest one would be just A. And uh, similarly with the allowed prefixes factors and so on. When I say that at the end has to be A, A, B, A, or B, B, uh, then here again, it is sufficient for me to say that there has to be A at the end. And the information that A, A, and B, A has to be there is, uh, is redundant. So uh, what we want to find out is that if we have some input automaton to find the shortest factors of some certain kind, be it, uh, be it uh, forbidden prefixes, suffixes, inner factors, or maybe allowed suffixes as well. Uh, this was uh, uh, studied uh, previously by Rogers and Lambert, where they used this as a tool uh, to uh, 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 research stress patterns of natural languages. So this is something that uh, actually had uh, some uh, some real world use case, uh, and we basically uh, improved and generalized their construction. At least that's the official story. The unofficial story is that we uh, found uh, found this out independently, and then we realized, oh shit, someone did also something like that. But we found out that uh, our approach has some uh, is let's say better. Uh, so what we will consider as the shortest characteristic characteristic factors are these four. <clears throat> All the kinds of uh, uh, forbidden ones and the allow suffixes. The issue now with uh, like why we don't consider like the shortest of like, uh, like inner factors or prefixes is uh, it's not exactly clear what that is supposed to be. Because the shortest thing that can appear in the middle of, uh, of, uh, of a string is the empty string. So then it is like, uh, okay, like what uh, that can be. When it comes to the allow suffixes, there we can say like we can uh, uh, we can uh, characterize it using automata. Basically, that it has to be something that will end in a final state, and from that the empty string might not be sufficient to end in a final state uh, in every single case. But in the other cases, it's kind of hard to characterize something like that. And the allow suffixes are gonna be then useful for the second uh, part. Uh, which is the uh, which is the round of the automotive. So uh, how does these uh, kind of factors uh, behave in an automotive? So uh, when I have some short, uh, shortest forbidden factor, it means it should not contain another forbidden factor as its inner factor, so it's like somewhere in between. And if I will run this on an auto uh, in an automaton. That means that uh, no matter where I start, I should uh, I should reach fail, which means pretty much like uh, either having uh, some missing transition, which will cause a fail, or maybe reaching some uh, some useless or sync state that is never gonna reach uh, reach a final state. When it comes to the forbidden suffixes, they should not contain another forbidden suffix as a suffix, uh, and uh, uh, but it is uh, like possible that it might contain forbidden suffix somewhere else in the industry. But it should also not contain any forbidden factor as a factor because otherwise, like this would be redundant. We already have it as a factor. We don't need it in suffixes as well. So uh, in the automaton, it means that all paths in the automaton must reach a non-final state because uh, that will guarantee us that it's never gonna. Uh, be in an accepted uh, accepted string. Uh, when it comes to the prefixes, again, it should not contain another prefix as its prefix, 
also should not contain any uh, forbidden factors. And uh, there, like in the automaton, we are interested only in the path from the initial state. So from the initial state, uh, uh, we uh, this is said this is said wrong. It should uh, have uh, from the initial state should have. Uh, and lastly, the short is allowed suffixes. It's pretty much very similar to the case of the forbidden suffixes. Only in this case, uh, uh, the automaton should always reach the final state whenever um, the lead such as good. So, uh, how would we uh, how would we find like some of these uh, some uh, some of these things? Uh, the previous approach for this was to uh, was to uh, investigate the so-called power set graph of the DFA. So, uh, what that is is basically a graph where nodes are just some subsets of the states of the automaton. So, for this automaton, uh, like all the all the states here are some subset of that. And um, uh, edges are uh, when uh, for like uh, by basically aggregating all the transitions from that set of states. So something similar when we are doing like a determinization of an automaton. This is a very similar concept. So for example, from state one to three, when I uh, read A, so from one I don't have any transition. From two I read state three, and from uh, three. By reading A, I will also reach state three, so there is a transition to state three in here. So now that on B, uh, I might reach like from here state two, from here state one, and that will give me uh, this uh, uh, this state. Now the part of the automaton uh, of, of this graph that has only uh, one state, that is pretty much just the original automaton. Uh, with like maybe the, the slight exception that whenever we have a missing transition, for example, on A here, that will lead us to an empty set. Now, uh, in this power set, uh, power set graph, uh, we can basically find, uh, find uh, uh, the type of factors. So, for example, all the forbidden factors uh, are some path that starts in the set of all states and reaches the empty set. So it will uh, it will have to fail. A forbidden factor uh, will start in uh, in uh, this uh, set of all states, and uh, it has to end in any subset that does not contain any any final state, and so on. Uh, when it comes to finding the shortest of these factors, so that there are no other like uh, uh, parts of the string in that, uh, it becomes a little bit more tricky. And the approach that was uh, used for this. Is basically uh, to create like a BFS style algorithm that, during uh, its run, filters uh, all the uh, all the like uh, uh, unnecessary paths. When it comes to like uh, uh, when I find something that is that is a forbidden factor, uh, I will filter some all other paths. Uh, like that. So basically, for the forbidden factors, for example, we would start in this state and go against the direction uh, of the edges, and then uh, apply uh, some filter as well. There is one kind of issue with this. When I'm making like a, like a BFS that goes against the direction of the edges, I might have like for one string, I might have multiple paths. So it kind of behaves sort of like a non-deterministic automaton. For example, when I'm here in state three and I will uh, want to like go against the direction of the edges on a symbol A, I have a lot of possibilities. I can go here, I can go here, I can go here and so on. So there, like, uh, we have to, like, since there are multiple paths, there needs to be some sort of uh, filter. Uh, this was in the case of the automaton that was, uh, that was local. So uh, if we uh, use this for an automaton that is not local, which was the case of the second automaton in the, in the previous example, what will happen is that in the power set graph of non-local automata, uh, we are going to find some cycle that is on uh, the set of states that have size at least two or, or bigger. So that's the case of, for example, here. And then there we will find that the alternative DAs are not going to be, uh, be synchronized. So when, it, when uh, you uh, use that approach uh, on automata that are not local, it's going to break because of this. There's going to be some sort of cycle, and uh, it suddenly 
uh, will not be able to find all the atrocious factors because some of them might have like unbounded length. Mm -hmm. So uh, what uh, was our approach? Instead of like making some traversal of the power set graph, we are gonna directly construct an automaton that accepts exactly those shortest uh, uh, characteristic sets of uh, uh, factors, or more precisely, they're gonna be uh, reversed because similarly, we are gonna make some construction that will go like against the direction uh, of the edges. And uh, one uh, like uh, improvement of this approach is that this is gonna work even when the automaton uh, on the input is not local. Because when it will not be local, it will just mean that the automaton that accepts the shortest uh, factors is going to describe an infinite language, which means there are going to be some uh, some uh, some cycles within that uh, within that automaton. But every uh, uh, string that it's going to describe, it's still going to be some shortest uh, characteristic factor. And uh, one change that we are going to use for this. Uh, is that instead of having like partial DFAs, which means uh, missing some transitions, uh, we are going to consider total DFAs with some sync state or useless state. So for any automata that is partial, we can always make it complete by adding, uh, adding some sync state and routing all the missing transitions uh, there. So uh, what will, uh, what will, how, how will this uh, approach look like? We are going to basically make a construction that will find some shortest synchronizing strings to a certain step with some additional properties. So, for example, the forbidden factor, the shortest forbidden factor, should be some synchronizing string uh, that will synchronize to the set of useless states. So, it will all uh, reading the string should always reach a useless states. Uh, now, in order for this uh, factor to be the shortest then there has to be at least one path that is going to reach a useless state only at its end. So there will not be any transitions between uh, useless, useless states. When it comes to the forbidden suffixes, they should again synchronize to a set of non-final states. And uh, again, in order for that to be the shortest, at least one of them needs to end in a useful state. So if all of them uh, if all of them uh, uh, reach a useless state, that means they are forbidden factor and not forbidden suffix. With the LL suffix is similar thing, uh, but it will synchronize to the set of final states. And at least one path, of course, might must end uh, in a final state. Uh, and with the shortest forbidden prefixes, there it is like a kind of similar condition to the forbidden factors, but uh, it's only regarding the path from the initial state. So, uh, so from the initial state, we should reach uh, a useless state. And in order for that to be shortest, it should terminate right when it uh, finds the first uh, useless state. And uh, again, like uh, if uh, to, to, uh, to not have a uh, forbidden uh, uh, factor instead of this, uh, uh, if such path ends in a useless state, from every string, not just from uh, from the initial, but from every, uh, every state, uh, then it will be a short uh, forbidden factor. So we will exclude those. So uh, our construction will look something like this. I will uh, I, I will explain how uh, it will work. Uh, so mm -hmm. we have again uh, the example of the automaton. For that, we added some useful state into this and put like all the missing transition. Uh, transitions into the state. Now, uh, uh, for the, for example, forbidden factors, we said for all states, there has to be a path that goes to a useless state, and at least one of them must uh, reach the useless state only at its end. So uh, the idea here will be we're going to modify the power set construction, and we're going to add also some additional information into each node, which uh, the additional information is that like some states might have like some sort of mark. Uh, and uh, for the forbidden factors, uh, we want something that uh, will end in a useless state, 
and start in something that contains every single in every single state. Like I said, this is gonna be like strings in the reverse. So basically the true like factor is gonna be something that goes from the final state back to the initial. And uh, the transitions here will be made like between two uh, two, uh, two, uh, two, uh, two nodes here is that from some state, we're gonna go against the direction of the edges in the automaton. So for example, from this U, when I want to make transition on B, I will uh, take every transition against the direction of, of the edges on B. So from U, I can get to state two, or I can make uh, I can make a loop here. So I will get into some state that contains uh, uh, the state U and state two. And the idea with the mark here is that uh, this will tell me whether there exists some path that uh, does not contain some edge between two, two useless states. So for example, when I use this loop here on the B, that means that there was a transition from a useless state to a useless state. And I will uh, say that uh, this, no, uh, this path no longer has this property. So the state U is not going to have the mark. But for the state 2, there was a transition that went from, the, uh, from state 2 to the useless state. It still holds this property that uh, there, uh, it's terminated right at the useless state. So I'm going to keep the mark there. If I will do then the same transition uh, from, from, uh, from this on B, for example, then again, I will take all the, uh, uh, all the, uh, all the edges against uh, the direction from state U. So on B, I will again get the uh, U and state 2. And from 2, I will go against the direction of edges and get the state 1. And since 2 was marked, then 1 will be marked here as well, because there was no transition between uh, useless states. This way, I will, uh, I will construct uh, the automaton, basically uh, starting from this sort of like initial state. And uh, what will be a final state for something like this is when I have some state that contains every single uh, every single state from the automaton, and at least one of them has the mark. So that means there is at least one path that has that certain property. So these two are, for example, two distinct uh, states. But I know that, for example, from uh, when I reach this state, then from state three, on reading, for example, these three Bs, from state three, I will have a path that will terminate right uh, at U. So that would be one B to B, and the third B ends in the U. When I have this uh, state, for example, I can get from here uh, on a uh, string like ABA. Again, it will be in reverse, but this is a palindrome. So when, uh, when I read ABA from two, A, B, and A, I end it right at U. And same thing would happen from the state three. I would have A, B, and A. And it has uh, the same property. If I would do this from state one, there will be some redundant transition. So I have A, B, A. There was like some loop. I used the loop within the use of state. <laughs> now, the only difference between like uh, any sort of uh, different factors here is what will be my initial state within this automata. So if I want a forbidden uh, suffix, uh, there the condition was that it needs to synchronize to a, a non-final states. So I will take all the non-final states within this automaton, which is just to state one, and I will put a mark on them so that at least one path will end in such state. And for the useless state, I will add it only, you know, as that uh, uh, because I need to also like uh, the string can synchronize into that state as well. So if I will now make uh, this uh, this uh, state initial, then any path that again reaches something that uh, that contains every single state is gonna be the shortest forbidden uh, forbidden factor. With the allowed suffixes, we want it to synchronize to a set of final states. And again, at least one of them has to reach the final state. So we will put the mark there. And it will tell us, for example, that A itself is a, is a, a shortest allowed uh, suffix or two Bs. 
With the prefixes, the only thing that changes is going to be very similar to the uh, uh, forbidden factors, but what will change is what is the final state. So for the final state, we want something where the initial state has a mark, which is, for example, this state and this state. So the for, uh, shortest forbidden prefixes would be uh, either just A or two Bs, which was something uh, like uh, in the initial example, uh, what uh, you were expecting. So if we do the same thing with the automaton that was not local, we start the construction the same way. What will happen is that within this automaton, uh, what will happen is that we will have a cycle, which we have, for example, on these states, there is a cycle. But it, uh, it still maintains the property that uh, any path from an initial state to some final state, even if it, it will go through the loop how many times we want, it will still be the shortest forbidden factor or some characteristic factor of some certain set. One thing I also forgot to mention before, when I reach some state that contains no mark, then that is pretty much a useful state. I could never reach a final state from that. So whenever I will find some state like this, there is no need for me to create some further transitions uh, going, uh, going from that. Now, uh, uh, for the last part of this, how we can maybe utilize something like this. So uh, this was uh, utilized uh, by Rogers and Lambert to, uh, in their research of uh, uh, natural languages. Uh, some properties. Uh, one other thing that uh, we found out could be useful for this, purely from the theoretical point of view, we haven't made any uh, any like experimentation on this, but uh, is to maybe uh, speed up run of an automaton, which means uh, when I have an automaton and I have a string, I want to know what states were reached in that automaton. So uh, for this, we first had to uh, formalize what a, a run of an automaton is, or at least the useful uh, parts of that. So uh, in general, a run of an automaton is just a sequence of states. When I read a cert uh, that certain string, what states I'm going to uh, reach after reading some prefix of, uh, of, uh, of certain length. Uh, but what is sometimes useful when we are constructing some algorithms that uh, utilize uh, an approach like of uh, automata, uh, they are mostly interested in where is the occurrence of a final state. So for example, when I have uh, a pattern matching problem, one uh, approach to solving pattern matching problems, which means finding some either like uh, substrings, subsequences, positions of substrings within uh, within a certain longer text is to create an automaton that accepts suffix, uh, like uh, all strings that have uh, the pattern as a suffix within that string. That way, whenever we reach a final state, it means there is an occurrence of this pattern within a string. So uh, for that, we are interested where in the text we have an occurrence of uh, of a final state. And uh, we formalize that into the notion of so-called positive position run, which will be the set of indices where uh, uh, the, uh, the DFA uh, will reach a final state during that. Uh, sometimes you might be interested when we have, for example, multiple patterns, then uh, the specific final state might tell us which pattern was matched and so on. So we can also extend it into uh, having not only index, but also the state that was reached uh, during that. But that will be like a, uh, let's say, a bit more complex thing than just having the notion of some final state. So uh, uh, the positive position run can be computed using the pattern matching of the characteristic factors, uh, which pretty much means, uh, OK, first, uh, maybe uh, just some examples. So when we have, uh, again, some automaton that we, uh, we've seen before. Uh, when I read the string B A A B B A B A A, for example, <coughs> these are the states I'm gonna reach from the beginning. So I will start in state one, which means after reading the prefix of like zero, and then I will go through these kind of states. So the run of the automaton will be precisely the sequence of states, and the positive position run is we reach the state two or three, which are the final state. 
on positions one, uh, two, three, then five and six. So there, are, that's going to be the set of uh, what is the positive position run. And uh, with the positive prime, we are just going to add into a pair which uh, state was uh, found. So the positive position run, uh, the idea how to uh, compute something like this using the pattern matching is uh, we are going to first find the shortest characteristic factors. So uh, we don't really need uh, uh, forbidden prefixes. But we, uh, what we specifically want is uh, uh, the set of uh, for, uh, forbidden factors and set of allowed suffixes. And uh, then based on that, we're going to find the K for which it is local. Might be unbounded, but if it is local, uh, then uh, we can just check the prefix of that certain length, which will tell us whether it is forbidden or not, or where we can find the final states there. And then if once we do that, then we can use some pattern matching algorithm, uh, more precise so a pattern matching algorithm that matches a set of patterns. And uh, inside the string, we are going to be uh, looking for uh, the forbidden factors and allow suffixes. And whenever I will find a forbidden factor, it means I can terminate at that point because the run of the automobile just failed. But if I uh, find a match of an allowed suffix, then that means I reach the final state at that point, and I will add the index of uh, that uh, occurrence to the positive position run to, uh, to the set. And uh, when the automaton is local, then this k is going to be bounded. And after that, I will be able to apply the pattern matching. If it is not local, then uh, that means the k is unbounded, and this step to make like the standard run from uh, for the prefix is going to be for the entire string. So then I will have pretty much like no benefit. But for the local DFAs, I uh, pretty much like uh, uh, this algorithm will inherit the properties of the pattern matching algorithm that was used. And uh, we know that certain pattern matching algorithms or pattern set matching algorithms have some interesting properties, uh, more precisely the, uh, the so-called backwards pattern, set, uh, pattern matching algorithms like, for example, comment solver algorithm uh, can run for certain inputs in sublinear time uh, because the idea there is that uh, it is able to skip some parts of the input. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> in the worst case, it's going to be like uh, more than linear. Uh, the worst case is something like uh, uh, the length of the string times the length of the longest pattern we can find in the set. But uh, in the best case, it would be uh, it would be like uh, uh, the length of the uh, length of the input string divided by that uh, length of the longest pattern. And it was found out that on average they are performing better than linear linear time. So something like this can uh, translate to certain inputs uh, here as well. So uh, just to summarize, we introduced some direct construction of uh, finite automata that accepts exactly the shortest characteristic factors for which we uh, which we uh, consider these four types of uh, factors. Uh, it generalized this, constru uh, this construction generalizes problem for automata that are also not local uh, and also uh, also uh, does uh, require like less processing because the construction itself is like uh, every transition is defined by itself. Doesn't need any uh, any like previous steps for that. Then we also formalize the notion of positive prime and positive uh, position one, and we show how we can compute the positive position one uh, of local DFAs using pattern set matching, which can have in certain cases some interesting properties. So thank you. We have time for some additional questions. So, anyone? Well, I have a question. <laughs> I understood, uh, maybe I misunderstood, but uh, you have these three sets for different factors, prefixes, and suffixes. Do they? Do they actually like fully characterize the language? 
or is or I'm understood something? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, basically, not fully because uh, when we have uh, uh, in the beginning, when we have like the uh, locally tested languages, uh, since they are uh, the sets that characterize this have some length k, it means they might not really characterize strings that are shorter than that. That are shorter than k. And so basically for these strings, like uh, they uh, all of these strings like either can be in the language or they might not be in the language. That's actually like one of the things that uh, is uh, uh, we will be publishing a full version of uh, of this work, uh, where we will also uh, uh, consider these types of strings. They can be found using the same method by just using a different final states and initial states within uh, the author method. Mm -hmm. So what, what I was like getting at, so do you show us a construction from some local automaton to what to be inside, like something yeah. uh, uh, in, in the right direction also possible? When you have uh, when you have the like all these uh, three sets and you also have uh, the information which uh, strings that are shorter than that uh, are in the language or not, mm -hmm. it is possible to construct a local automaton from that. I haven't really uh, like uh, thought about like how to do that, but yeah. it should be possible. And the automaton, I guess, would be unique. Yeah. If I give you the shortest, shortest uh, problem factor from the yeah. it makes sense. So uh, all of these are regular languages, yeah. and, and for uh, for regular languages, we can always uh, fi find a unique uh, different oh, yeah. automaton. So. And then the construction, even if uh, the construction itself did not create this automaton, you can always do minimization and find this automaton. Are there any other questions? Maybe one more question. <laughs> uh, is the output, like the sizes of the sets, somehow related to the automaton? Like, for example, number of states of the automaton, it's exponential or something like that? Well, in uh, in general, like uh, it can be exponential. So uh, it can uh, 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 from like some other work, we can, for example, uh, find that when I have a total of certain number of states, the maximum like uh, k for the locality uh, is uh, square of that. So that's the maximum possible locality. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to then the size of these sets, like in the worst case, it's going to be like, a, uh, well, not exactly all possible strings of uh, length k, but it's still going to be some uh, something that can be like, a, uh, let's say, like, a, can be exponential in certain cases, some sort of exponential. But uh, one uh, good thing about like our approach is that uh, if we do this construction, then the useful part of this automaton is going to have size proportional to the size of the output. So if you have small, mm -hmm. the set is small, this automaton is going to be small as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So if there are no other questions, we thank the speaker again.